Welcome to Hutton Arena at Hamlin University as Community Hoops continues its coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament. Today, the Bracket B third place game is about to get underway featuring the Centennial Cougars and the De La Salle Islanders. Both teams looking to get their first win of the season. I'm Mike Beaton, joined by Alex Nagel. Alex, this will be an interesting match. De La Salle coming off a surprising upset to St. Paul Central, 79-72. They were defeated and went up by uh, quite a margin early in the first half and just got shot. Yeah, you know, you know, I look at this contest and I give an edge to Centennial, but yet I'm not sure how much. So we'll find out who has the edge, but let's take a look at the starting lineups first. We'll begin with the visiting by virtue of their jersey color, De La Salle Islanders, Linnea Starr, Tyshana Johnson, Chanel Dickinson, Mariah Adonine and Maya Lloyd will be on the floor. Tyshana Johnson, the big player to watch out for for De La Salle. Their big force inside. Their starters are Danica Gieske, Kristen Norby, Kayla Beckett, Kayla Bilderback, and Maggie Hogg will get the start. Kayla Beckett, Centennial's catalyst. Had that breakout game a couple years ago in the breakdown tip-off classic against Jordan, the daughter of head coach Jill Beckett. Keys to the game for De La Salle. They need to play better defense. They let Central come from behind and take over, get that upset victory, and they need to learn how to finish as well. They yeah. were leading and in control for most of that game. For Centennial, their keys to the game are to stop De La Salle's chances, and they're going to do that by trying to force them out of the lane. I talked with Jill Beckham just before this game began as De La Salle has the first possession. She said if... Uh, they die by the three, so what? She just does not want to die by inside game. And speaking of inside, Chanel Dickinson goes there, picks up the first basket of the game for the Islanders. Norby to Hogg, out to build her back for three. No good. Speak, Rebound, go speaking ahead. Speaking of turnovers, I just lost my pin. I had to get it. <laughs> Uh, we won't charge that against you. Maya Lloyd, long two, got it. De La Salle with a quick four zip start. Gieske loses it to Adonine. Lloyd. Out to Adonine, and there's a foul called. So that will stop the clock with 16.46 left. Okay. 16.35 now. Gieski nearly stripped. Tough shot, doesn't fall. And a whistle. I believe there's a foul called. No. Went out of bounds. Centennial ball. They're wearing the red. De La Salle wearing the white. Sharp looking uniforms, those Centennial uniforms, Mike. <laughs> I like those. Updated them this season. Their previous design wasn't bad either. No, no, it wasn't. It's hard to improve on something that's already good. It makes you wonder sometimes why did they change it, but they like the new look. It's very slick, and uh, Jill Beckins hoping that her team will play more slick than they did yesterday as Adonine with the finger roll. 
Six nothing Islanders. And Centennial's got to got to find a way to uh, close off that inside lane, Mike. Foul is issued. It's against De La Salle. Now, De La Salle, we were talking in the last game about how Minneapolis North, their players spread out. Well, a North alum uh, also crossed and headed for Nicolette Island, Maya Johnson. She was offered a head coaching spot at North, but decided uh, not to accept because of the mess that's going on over there. And yeah. Maya is trying to uh, move up to the collegiate coaching ranks and figured that she didn't need a lot of drama at this point. Well, you know, hope, hope she finds what uh, something on, in that area. You know, she'd be a very great addition no matter where she winds up. Gieske with the drive on the left side. to get Centennial on the board. Maya did, uh, was an assistant at Minneapolis North last year. We'll talk more about her later. Right now, Dickinson draws the foul. Tyshana Johnson to inbound. Johnson, one of Minneapolis North's uh, transfers when Faith Johnson Patterson moved from the Polars to the Islanders. Ooh, I thought she stepped out of bounds there, Mike. She was very close. Adonine was. Uh, Linnea Starr with the runner. De La Salle up 8 2. All four, all but one of their starters has scored already for De La Salle. Gieske is blocked. Who got it in there? Dickinson? Lloyd open, breaks from Beckin, and gets the layup. Jill Beckin right away calls timeout to try and stop the bleeding here, Mike. 10 10 2. De La Salle over Centennial. And so, talk a little bit more about Maya Johnson if you haven't followed basketball for a while. She was a standout of Minneapolis oh, North. Yep. And a great career in Michigan State as well. She originally started in St. Louis and then transferred. Yep. Uh, to Michigan State to finish out her collegiate career. Uh, was honored at the awards banquet her senior year when she graduated in 09, but she put up some big numbers uh, early on. Her numbers toned down a bit in the last couple seasons, but uh, always a presence with the Spartans and still keeps in contact with them. All right, and that's good. And you know, I remember her high school career. What a dominating player she was. Faith Johnson Patterson called her perhaps one of the hardest workers she's ever had in a Minneapolis North Jersey which tomorrow more might not like to hear. But <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow, tomorrow more had a great uh, career at Minneapolis North as well, Mike. I remember her but, well. Well, and, we'll, and uh, put it this way, I think Maya has more state titles than a T. Well, <laughs> I tell you what, it, I, I see uh, tomorrow more in the summer league. It's great to see her still playing hard and playing well. Well, Centennial plays hard. They play well too. Three from Beckin. It, right, that's Paige Wytoshik. That was short and was picked up by Linnea Starr. And it's stolen right back by Gieske. And back in with this, that was not back in, I'm getting crossed here. Dyshawna Johnson with the basket. 12-2. Back in, in and out and in. And they finally stopped the run. Lloyd thought about a three. Finds Adonine instead, and Adonine with the swish. Great shooting touch by Adonine on that one, Mike. What I'm seeing from De La Salle so far, just patience. You know, they're, they're not taking the quick shot right away, just making just enough extra passes. They're and not they're, passing too much. And speaking of passes, Centennial is making some questionable decisions with theirs. Adonine drives and draws the foul. Will be a blocking foul. I believe against Nordby. No, it's Gieske. Adonane had a big performance yesterday in their game with St. Paul Central. Adonane gets the back end. She has six. Yeah. 
you got to like this. All five of De La Salle's starters are already on the board. Balanced scoring, I'm sure head coach Faith Johnson Patterson likes that. Faith Johnson Patterson, we talked about North and the connection. She won five state titles as a head coach there before she left at the end of the 2009 season. Beckin can't get the three. And in that time, I mean, strange how time changes things and yeah. how stories evolve. Minneapolis North, they were talking about another dynasty over there because yeah. they finished third with a lot of eighth graders or I second know. to St. Michael Auberville in the yep. 3A title. Yep. Then all of a sudden, players moved to different places for whatever reason it happened and now we're talking about a perhaps a dynasty with De La Salle in 3A. They certainly took the first step last year. Yeah, they sure did. Centennial's got to be very precise with their passes here. They're, they're creating, or rather, they're committing a lot of turnovers, and that's led to the score that we see so far. Another errant pass. And it's picked off by Starr, who finds Lloyd down court, but Lloyd won't get a chance. She tries to drive on the left side, works her way through the double team, and gets the layup. Wow. Well, she didn't have a chance for a breakaway shot, but hard work pays off. Another errant pass. Lloyd with the steal. From the free throw line, not this time. And it's rebounded by Norby. This is exactly how De La Salle ran last season against St. Paul Central. Yep. Getting out to a big run early. And a foul goes against De La Salle. It'll go against Linnea Starr. Kayla Beckham having all kinds of pressure on Mike. Paige Waitashik is out there with her. I see her older sister, Joelle, who had a great career here at Centennial. Now our short shooting senior with St. Ben's in the stands. And her other sister, Megan, is over in South Dakota State with the Jackrabbits in one of the nation's top mid-major programs. Lloyd with another steal. Maya Lloyd, the son of Curtis Lloyd, or the daughter of Curtis Lloyd. While I go work on my pronouns, uh, Tyshana Johnson <laughs> passes it off to Linnea Starr. Looking for Dickinson, can't find her, but it's still De La Salle ball. Mike, Centennial's got to find a way to stop the bleeding. They need to get a stop here and get a couple quick baskets and get some momentum. I spoke with and Jill here Beckin. Go. Here's that chance to get some momentum. Beckin one-on-one, -on -one. right-handed layup is good. I spoke with Jill Beckin just before the game, and she said Centennial were playing a little scared in their meeting with Eastview yesterday. They look a little scared here in the early going. Maybe that lay layup by Beckin will help them. It's 18-6. Pass intended for Dickinson. Sales behind her arms and a turnover on De La Salle. And you know, when you play a little scared like they did in the early going yesterday, and obviously as they have here, it makes even the simple things, which we saw with the turnovers and the passing. Claire Thomas, who started in yesterday's game, stepping in for Linnea Starr. Gieske, pump fakes, layup too strong. In the game for Centennial is Chris Bradley. And we have a stoppage in play for a foul. Just he put the ball up a little hard on that seemingly easy shot. Looks like she like she had the handlebar job on that one. When I spoke with Faith Johnson Patterson, she said De La Salle just needs to learn how to finish, how to close out. Mainly still chemistry. I mean, first couple of games of the season, that's always going to be a key. Aaron passed by Centennial, so a turnover on the Cougars. And what I've seen from De La Salle is that they're not backing away from that aggressive 
style of theirs. They only have one foul left to give, but it's just the nature of their game. Well, I think it's an identity that Keith Johnson Patterson wants to create for this team as well, Mike. Where they go for steals, it keeps the opponent honest. Oh, nice pass. The give and go to Thomas doesn't work. And Gieske is open. She'll get two points there. She's got some speed, doesn't she, Mike? I was almost going to uh, compare it to the Roadrunner, but... Uh, <laughs> They say you can't coach speed. It's always a great asset to have. Adonane thought about a three, instead goes inside. Now back out. She'll take a two. Off the backboard, and Lloyd draws the foul. Going to the line, she is. Another, and that's another small item that Centennial has to work on, boxing out. You know, she really came out of nowhere for that rebound and now goes to the line for De La Salle. We mentioned Lloyd, the daughter of Curtis Lloyd, known with the Gophers as one of the coaches in that program. As Lloyd gets the front end, in many sports, you really see it in basketball, but in several sports, there's a huge family connection. Oh, sure. Just everywhere. Yep. Whether it's a cousin or a sibling or a child. Yep. Maggie Hogg back in the game for Centennial. Tony having a little fun next to us. Obviously. Oh. <laughs> we got a foul. It's going to go against De La Salle as Beckham was driving. It will go against Thomas. Beckon to Bradley, going to Gieske. It's 28, and that bounces off. Nordby with the rebound. Centennial resetting. Beckon driving, and she had nowhere to go. Dickinson picks up the steal. Johnson out to Lloyd, and Lloyd makes it look easy from the right side. Lloyd is six. Gieske's shot is blocked, and it's picked up by Hogg, who fires, can't hit. Rebound Johnson, finding Lloyd again, and Beckin with the clean block. Great move by Beckin on that block, stopping easy two. And Paige Waitashik back in the game for <laughs> Also stepping in is Samantha Dornsbach from De La Salle. She will give Maya Lloyd a breather. And De La Salle scores 24-8. Pretty shut off the glass there by Chanel Dickinson. Dickinson is four. Gieske feeds inside to Bradley, and Adonane broke up the play. Ball's heading back, De La Salle's way. De La Salle out of fouls to give. Adonane can't get to the hole, but she draws the blocking foul. It's ruled a shooting foul, so Adonane will go to the line.
gets the front end. If you're Centennial, how do you respond to this after yesterday's thumping from Eastview? Well, you know, here early on, we've seen the mistakes that they've made. They've had a lot of turnovers, a lot of errant passes, and you've got to settle down. You know, do what you do, do what you do best. And that's ball control. Let's see if they can get some good offensive sets where they can make get some rhythm at least. Bradley with the ball, heads to Waitashek. Centennial sending in most of their second units. Traveling violation on Gieski, step before she dribbled. Yep. And I'm sure Jill Beckin at the half will want to sit her team down and just talk about, hey, let's calm down, let's settle down. And they need to do that, and they haven't done that yet. 7.50 to go. Dornsbach for three, short. Rebound to Donane, looking for Johnson, sails over her head. And you know when you're facing a 17 point deficit early on, it makes your job that much more difficult, obviously. Waitasha in trouble and she gets the ball stripped by Dornsbach. Finds Johnson and Johnson is fouled by Bilderback, so she'll be going to the line. Kayla Beckham will also step back in the game as Johnson heads to the line. We talked about this yesterday. Worth mentioning again, De La Salle 31-1 last year, finished third in the Class 3A state tournament. And the strange thing about it, despite their great record, despite the fact they won 31 straight or 30 straight games before losing, fans are disappointed. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, that's, that's what, uh, when you have a program, when you reach elite status, uh, you expect championships, and anything short of that is a disappointment. And it was with a young team, you know, the first season with uh, Faith Johnson Patterson. Of course, the first season's always the hardest as you get used to the new players and new systems and all that stuff. Double dribble call. All sorts of silly mistakes here in the early going by Centennial, Mike. Similar to what we saw in yesterday's game. Yep. And we talked about keys to the game, forcing De La Salle out of the lane. So far, they've done a lot of damage inside. Dornsbach shot was blocked. Dickinson picked up the board. It will stay with De La Salle. Latasha got a hand on that one, I think. And this time, Dickinson finishes from the right side. Six points for Chanel, 6.40 to go in half number one. Centennial just can't stop the bleeding. Now they do, Gieske cleans up the mess. And they've been relying on her leadership and experience heavily here in this first half, Mike. Get this, all five of De La Salle's starters on the board. Centennial, 10 points, only two players have scored. And Adonine can't get the layup. It's rebounded by Hogg. Beckin works her way around, stops, pops, and gets the foul. Shooting foul for Beckin, the daughter of head coach Jill Beckin. Younger sister of Emily Beckin, also a centennial standout. And here's a net factoid for you. Both Beckin and Bilderback, seniors, as Beckin misses the front end. Both made the last two state tennis tournaments. This year, they made it to the quarterfinals before being knocked out by the eventual doubles champion in 2A, but they are very strong tennis players. And of course, I have to like that, don't I? <laughs> That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla Beckin picks up five as she gets the back end and a traveling call against De La Salle. Little steps for Centennial, getting a turnover here. De La Salle in the penalty, by the way. 
Fouling was on number 20, Claire Thomas. And Mytoshik used up the dribble. There's still a 10 second call, they can't get it out. They do get rid of it just in time for Gieske. She drives, can't draw the foul. And it's picked up by Lloyd. Johnson for three, no. Rebound star. Finds Johnson on the inside and Johnson doesn't get three but she gets two. Great pass and a great finish by Johnson. 19 point lead for the Islanders. A preseason favorite in class 3A. They were ranked number six by the breakdown. Gieske can't finish going to the line. She's had to work awfully hard here in this first half, Mike. Fouls against Johnson. We'll have first half stats and analysis for you. Brooke Shutta preparing to come into the game for the Cougars. And Gieske gets the front end. Maggie Hogg will get a breather now. Centennial's got to work on distributing the points. They still only have two players on the board. Gieske with eight, Beckham with five. Johnson is stripped from Beck by Beckham. Beckham inside and finishing the layup is Brooke Shutta. And a steal by Norby. Finds Shutta. Or that's Waitashik. Now to Gieske. And Gieske has done everything, including the and one, to keep Centennial in this game. All of a sudden, Centennial has found a little spark here. And it's come in the form of Danica Gieske, the 5'10 junior. And we've got a timeout. 30 17, 442 remaining. A lot of connections, of course, in the history of basketball. We talked about Centennial and the Beckins in particular, Emily and Kayla, and mentioned Megan, Mytoshek. Yep, Joel. Of course, Megan Knight, who's at George Washington, along with Kai Allums. And then with De La Salle, when Faith moved to De La Salle from North, she took her entire coaching staff with, which includes her husband, John, Assistant Lisa Von Steinbergs, yep. who was a member of Blake's undefeated 1994 yep. state championship had a, team. Had a great college career as well. Used and to see her over at uh, Northwest Athletic Club at St. Louis Park after uh, when I'd get done with tennis practice and she'd be off and, uh, over there. She once had a scrimmage with Kevin Garnett. Wow. Her and Tamara Moore, they were down, I, I believe it's where Lifetime Fitness is now at Target Center. They ran into Kevin. It was back when... Uh, Policies were a little more loose yeah. before the age of the internet. And uh, they, I think, I don't quite know exactly know the details, but if I recall correctly, uh, she was challenged or she saw Kevin Garnett, and so uh, they ended up dueling, and uh, <laughs> I'll give you one guess as to who won that. Well, <laughs> would have been a tough, uh, tough go around for sure. You know, Liesl's 5'10", and... Kevin Garnett calls himself 6'11", but everyone else calls him 7'1". Gieske completes a three-point play. Let's see what Centennial can do on defense here now, Mike. They're getting some momentum now. They need to step it up. Gieske has 11 of Centennial's 18 points. Thomas almost loses it in trouble, and she gets it off Gieske. That's the beauty of the out-of-bounds line. Yeah. You can use that to help you in strategy as Thomas is subbed out and Natalie Ewell will step in for the Islanders. Starr draws the blocking foul on Gieske. The interesting thing with De La Salle, we're seeing players who didn't get any minutes yesterday take the floor now. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, I, I, I think uh, Faith Johnson-Patterson wants to get an idea of what she has off the bench. 
what they can contribute in a situation like this where they have a lead. Star gets the front end. And the back, that gives her four. And Johnson's there for the steal, and she draws the foul against Nordby, so she's going back to the line with 4.06 remaining. Well, you heard the thud when Tyshawna Johnson got a hold of that ball. It's amazing what you can hear when the crowd falls silent as they've had here. <laughs> Johnson misses the front end, and St. Paul Central getting ready, wearing their white jerseys. It's a little easier to read in terms of the numbers, but uh, I'm still getting used to the fact they're wearing women's jerseys. Johnson misses both free throws, but it will stay in De La Salle's direction. Yeah, and I think uh, Kristen Norby just got her hand on that before it went out of bounds. Norby with a foul. She's racking them up quick, and both teams in the bonus, so more free throws coming. Linnea Starr heads to the line. First one is good. Looks like uh, the St. Paul Central team is starting to filter in here, Mike. Up on the stands up there. Star misses the back end, and Gieske with the board. Centennial was down by as much as 20. They've cut it to 15, but now they're having to deal with De La Salle's full court, and they do get across the timeline. Waitashek thought about a shot, instead passes out. Now Waitashek will take an open three and buries it. Much to the pleasure of older sister Joelle in the stands. And I'm sure Megan as well if she were yep. here. Yep. 33-21, and Waitashek gets on the board. That's for three, way off the mark from Tanny Britz. No putback. Seeing quite a few De La Salle reserves, and I don't believe it's because they think they have this game in the bag. It's still early. We're in the first half. I think Faith Johnson-Patterson, as you mentioned, just trying to measure out what she has on her bench. And Centennial, despite the uh, errant passes and turnovers they've had, they've done a pretty good job, I think, of weathering the storm. Well, you're going to run into a few storms playing basketball. That's a given. It's how you respond. Exactly. That's for three, short from Shutta. And it's picked up. No putback from Hogg. And a foul on Shutta with 2.37 remaining. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation and Starr missed it, so that gives Centennial a rebound and a chance to cut that lead. Here's Gieske, she draws a foul. I'd say the way things are going, keep going to Gieske. She's been providing Centennial most of the spark. Yeah, trying to imitate the road runner, runner again on that uh, fast break. <laughs> Got a little too far under the basket there, I think, Mike. Sometimes you run so fast as Gieske goes to the line, misses the first. You kind of forget where you're at sometimes. Yes, you forget where you're at. Yep. You maybe don't quite get the position you yep. want, and if you get under that rim, it's very tough to make a layup. Gieske makes the back end. 12 points for Danica. Adonane weaves her way through three defenders and gets the layup. 
unofficially nine points. Star steals it away. Lloyd going to the line. I think should have whistled for that foul. Both teams in the double bonus. We're seeing an almost carbon copy of De La Salle Central's game yeah. yesterday, except yep. it's just Centennial wearing the red. But very chippy, very aggressive game. And as Lloyd gets the front end, I wouldn't be surprised if Centennial can cut this lead down if free throws decide it. Well, let's see. You know, I like, like you were saying earlier, I think some other players are obviously going to have to step up for Centennial because Jiski has to work, had to work awfully hard here in this first half, Mike. She has 12. The rest of her team has 10 combined. Distribution has to be a key if Centennial is yep. going to pull this one out. Two minutes remaining in half number one. Gieske has a space in the hole, but goes out to Bradley to shut up for three. Yeah. Oh, in and out. And a foul. It's on Centennial. Not sure, but I think that's going to be going to go against number 40, Chris Bradley, the 6'1 senior. And here's the other factor with all this fouling. It may not come down to free throws. It could come down to depth. Yep. We don't have official foul numbers here. But as Yule gets her first point of the day, I'll be curious to see what those foul numbers look like because yeah, I no imagine kidding. players are close to foul trouble if they're not there. Yule makes both. And De La Salle increases their lead to 17, 39-22. Not a situation that head coach Jill Beckham was hoping for, I'm sure. Was hoping that deficit would be a little closer than 17. Beckham missed the three but followed her shot. Kept the ball alive and that allowed Bradley to get the board. And she draws the foul. Centennial also in the double bonus so Bradley will get two free throws. You know, you think of that great Centennial team from two years, the last couple, two or three years when they had Megan Knight, Richard Schooneman at the post. That was a tough team to contend with. It was a team that stopped St. Paul Central's winning streak in the 07-08 season. Bradley was one of two, and now Maya Lloyd's going the other way. I tell you, the keys to the game, I'm sure Jill Beckett's definitely going to take a look at the film. <laughs> or tell their players, you've got to stop Lloyd inside. They have not forced De La Salle out of the lane all game. No doubt the players will be subjected to that film as well. Waitashek drains a three from the corner. Less than a minute now. De La Salle turns it over. There's nothing worse when you, not only when you make a, make a mistake, but then you have to watch that same mistake on film. magnifies it even more. Gieske out to Wytoshek again. Not this time. It will go with De La Salle. 39 and a half seconds left in the first half. De La Salle looks like they'll hold for the final shot. Smart move for him here, I think, Mike. Up 15, 25 seconds left. The beauty of no shot clock. Yep. <laughs> In the game for De La Salle, as that pass is deflected, Corey Garner, number 40. Should have got her hand on that pass, Mike. Knocked it out of bounds. Now, ooh. Waitasha gets a hand on it. Star can get it in the backcourt. 
Centennial making De La Salle work. Five seconds. Adonine over three, God. buries it. And that ends the first half. Not the shot necessarily that Faith Johnson Patterson was looking for, but hey, I'm sure she'll take it going into the locker room and now once again, a huge lead. 18 point points. lead for De La Salle, 44-26. We'll be back with first half stats and analysis after the break. Not an easy game for you yesterday for the Centennial Cougars. No, not so much. We have a lot of things that we need to work on in the next few days of practice, so it'll be good to get back in the gym and work on those things. This is a nice weekend to learn that you need to work on one thing and not another against quality competition. It'd be kind of nice not to have a lose, to lose a basketball game, to learn things, but you know, we're, we're a pretty inexperienced team and we played a little bit scared yesterday and we got to play with more aggressive um, ability today. What do you expect out of De La Salle? Athleticism, quickness, we're going to need to keep them off the glass. We're hoping that they get one shot and done. That's our hope anyhow, that we can then, you know, make them play defense for a little bit down on our end. And um, we're hoping to play hard. And uh, would you reintroduce your starters for us tonight? Uh, tonight we're going with um, Kayla Bilderback, Kayla Beckin, Danica Gieske, Maggie Haug, and Kristen Nordby. Once in a while, I give a coach a chance to get up on the platform and talk about anything they want. Just sound off good, bad, or indifferent in the world of women's basketball. Here's your soapbox, and you can go in three, two, one. Oh boy, you know, if you say you're gonna call the hand check and that's gonna be a focal point, then make it a focal point in the game. Have fun today. <laughs> I hope to, thanks. And we welcome you back as Community Hoops continues its coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament. We're covering the bracket B third place match between De La Salle and Centennial. Both teams looking for their first one on the season. Let's take a look at the first half analysis with our in-game box score. Three players are tied for the game high in points scored. Maya Lloyd, Mariah Adonine have 12 for De La Salle and Danica Gieske has 12 for Centennial. But after that, that's when things uh, start to break off in terms of support. Chanel Dickinson has six points for De La Salle. Tyshana Johnson and Linnea Starr have five points. On Centennial's end, Paige Waitashik has six points with a couple threes. Kayla Beckin has five. Then Brooke Shutta has two. Chris Bradley has one. It's really been the support structure that's altered this game. I'm Mike Peden here with Alex Nagel. And really for Centennial, they got to stop... De La Salle from going inside. Lloyd in particular has made a feast out of there. Yeah, and, and, and I think just as important, Centennial has to take better care of the ball. They didn't do a very good job of that in, the, in that first half, Mike. Despite the number of fouls in the first half as Lloyd, her shot's too strong. It's picked up by Johnson. Despite the number of fouls, only one player is in, two players are in serious foul trouble for De La Salle. Nordby and Bilderback both have three for De La Salle. No player has three, and it's because they've been subbing in a lot. So uh, they've been picking up a lot of fouls and keeping it out that way. Nice play there by uh, Donica Jiski. She bounced the ball off of uh, De La Salle player, and now Centennial has possession. So keep an eye on the fouls. In terms of De La Salle, if you're wondering who uh, has the most, Johnson, Thomas, and Tanny Britz. All had two in the first half, and then we get our first foul of half number two. And we'll go against Starr. That will be her second. Builder back. Feeds to Gieske. And she's short. Johnson picks it up. Original starters on the floor for both teams, with the exception of Waitashek over in Centennial's end, taking Hog's spot. And De La Salle gets the timeout in time. You know, I'm, always, I'm just a little surprised that they didn't call traveling 
that time on uh, Chanel Dickinson. Looked like she had the ball and then she slid on the floor. And I thought that would be an automatic travel. Well, there's no review system here, even though we do have a camera <laughs> covering we don't, the game. We don't have the benefit of instant replay, unfortunately. <laughs> nope. So the calls the officials make are the calls everyone has to live with. Sixteen thirty-seven here, Mike. This is when Centennial has got to make a dent and get on a run here and get that deficit to a much more manageable margin. It's been all De La Salle since the opening tip, and Linnea Starr gets her first basket of the second half. She has seven. He's certainly been solid, if not spectacular. Ball will stay in Centennial's direction. By top, that was Beckon for three. She couldn't drain it from the corner. Star races down. Lloyd tripped up. Star picks it up. Dickinson can't nail the three. Lloyd with the rebound, but she loses it to Gieske. There's that speed we've been talking about. And she hits Starr's ankle. Gieske picks it up, goes to the line. Great awareness by Gieske. And the foul committed that time by Chanel Dickinson. Gieske misses the front end. De La Salle, 13 of 19 in the first half from the free throw line. Centennial just 6 of 9. Gieske with the back end. Giving her a baker's dozen. Johnson's 3 to the left and out of bounds. One of these of the uh, few bad possessions that De La Salle has had here in this game. Well, I was joking with the De La Salle coaching staff, and I know a lot of coaching staffs, especially on these two teams well, covering them over the years. They won't have to worry about a 30-game winning streak going into the state tournament, but that didn't say anything about De La Salle winning the next 31. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get the state title. Yeah. But really, the best coaches out there, and Bergfram was like this as well, and Joey Waters of Osseo, they really don't care about streaks. I mean, it's fun to talk about in the papers and online yeah. and, you know, in the stands, but a well, streak is just that. It's yeah. just a statistic. Well, look at the uh, New, England, uh, New England Patriots, for example, Mike. <laughs> Daishana Johnson, uh, no David Tyree type catch there, but she no. cleans up the mess. <laughs> <laughs> well put. I'll never forget that Super Bowl. That will all will stay with Centennial. 14 and a half left in the second. Stolen by Johnson, she has numbers. Goes to Star, back to Johnson, the little <laughs> shake and bake. You know, I'm sure one thing that head coach Jill Beckham is going to want to emphasize when they get back to practice this next week, Mike, is taking care of the ball, making good decisions, making good passes. Waitashik nails the three. Her third triple of the game. Lloyd for the response over the backboard and falls in Dickinson's hands. Did not cross the backboard, just went over it. It has to cross the backboard for it to be called out of bounds. 
20 point lead for the Islanders. And this is the De La Salle team I think Faith Johnson Patterson was hoping she'd see yesterday. Yeah. But as we said, doesn't matter how you do in November, it's how you do in March. Norby can't finish. Picked up by Adonine. Star goes inside, finds Johnson, but she's in traffic, gets out of it. Star, tough shot. She had three red jerseys. Lloyd with the rebound. She can't put it down. Star can't clean it up. Over the back call. Timeout. What are they calling that? Chanel Dickinson with that foul? I believe so, yes. That was a technical. Oh, wow. A technical was issued to Dickinson. I couldn't tell what she did. It looked like she had complained, not vociferous, vociferously necessarily, but. At first I said timeout, but the referee made the tee, and the timeout is with the shoulders. So Geet back in at the line. She gets the front end. So dual fouls issued to Dickinson. The personal foul and the technical at high school and college. A technical foul is considered a personal foul. I think we saw that yesterday, if, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. We did, and the... Not sure which game it was. That was the uh, Central De La Salle game. You're right. That's right. Gara Edwards. And a blocking foul on De La Salle. This one will go against Lloyd. De La Salle with an 18-point lead, but just one foul left to give. Centennial still has yet to commit a foul. Back in, in trouble. Gets out of it from Gieske. Now to build her back. Who is a triple jumper on the Centennial track team. And Gieske with a right-handed layup. 15 points for Gieske. Will she step up? Will someone else support her? Or will De La Salle march to their first win of the season? Loy can't get the layup from inside, and it's picked up by Nordby. Back in. Finds Waitashik. Traveling call, that's the right call. You can't step, then dribble. No. It works the other way around. <laughs> Jill Beckham trying to urge her team on, fight hard. I'm sure she's a little frustrated with all the turnovers today, though, Mike. A lot of turnovers, but Centennial has a chance to catch up from the free throw line, depending on how the rest of this game goes. De La Salle out of fouls to give. Centennial still has all six. And later on, when Rosemount comes in for the bracket C event, one of the assistant coaches from Rosemount is a referee in this game. So he's had a very long night, very yeah. long weekend. Yeah, he sure has. Rosemount uh, lost to Wyzetta in the 5A championship last night. And he's back here officiating. It's not uncommon to see, though, high school officials coming from other employers. No. And it just shows you the, uh, the love they have for, the high, for high school sports, Mike. Thomas with their first field goal of the game. They've corrected the foul, so De La Salle still has one to give. Builder back. Can't put it down. Johnson with the board. Bounces it off a of Cougar to keep possession. Here, 
Johnson going deep, and it's picked off by Gieske. And Johnson steals it right back, and now she loses it to Bilderback. And now we've got a dog pile going for the ball, jump ball. Possession arrow points to De La Salle. You won't find that in football. Well, uh, a flurry of turnovers there all of a sudden. That'll keep the statisticians busy. Yeah. 52-34, De La Salle comfortably in front for most of the game. Foul, it will likely go against Gieske. Not sure how many that is on her, Mike. That's Waitashik who got called for the oh, foul. Waitashik. It was tough to tell from this vantage point, but that's Centennial's first foul yeah. of the half. They still have five to give. De La Salle just has one. Took them almost the entire uh, ten minutes to get it. And now Waitashik, two quick fouls, wow. just like that. Fouling usually evens out once the game ends. Yeah, and, and you know, it's just a, a, a matter there of being too over, you know, overly aggressive, trying to make something happen. And that sends Lloyd to the line, the daughter of Gophers assistant coach Curtis Lloyd. And she gets the front end. Maggie Hogg checking in now for why Tasha get a breather? Fourteen for Lloyd. De La Salle tries to go for the steal, but the out of bounds line is our enemy. Shutta to Gieske, back to Shutta for three. Off the rim, rebound, builder back. We mentioned state triple jumper in track. Beckin can't get the put back. Whoops. And Gieske had no idea Shutta passed to her. And Shutta quickly talks to Gieske. Nothing. It's nothing tense about that. Yeah, you know, just not a lot working for. Centennial right now, Mike. Yeah. It was not a tense discussion, just saying, hey, well, we'll get him next time. Lloyd draws the foul against Gieske. You know, and a lot of it comes down to that chemistry factor we've been discussing here this weekend. You know, when you have young players, you know, filtering into the lineup, it takes a little time for them to all mesh together. As Lloyd goes back to the line, and makes the front end. What does De La Salle gain by playing two Class 4 opponents? These are teams they will not see in the state tournament, right. but what do they gain well, in this first weekend? I, you know, I think, what you know, especially early on, it gets helps get, get them battle-tested battle early, you know, because when they face top-flight competition in the, in the later rounds of the section, they'll be that much more ready, especially when they go up against teams uh, you know, that they've that they've had problems with before, whether they'll, it's Hill Murray or, or somebody like that. They'll play another 4A squad in the Dick Sporting Goods Tip-Off Classic at Hopkins next week when they take on Minnetonka. Stars going to the line. And she gets the front end. And 3A, it's a bit of a toss-up. Hill Murray's a favorite, yep. so is Benilde St. Margaret's, and so is De La Salle. Well, only one of those schools can come out on top. Yep. And, and having competition like this early on can only help them. That foul's going to go against Thomas, and that's De La Salle's last that they can give. So they will be in the penalty for the remainder of this game, but with a 24-point lead, I don't think that's something Faith Johnson-Patterson's worried about. Centennial not getting to the line much. De La Salle just staying with their aggressive gameplay. I mean, it gets them a lot of fouls, but it's also earned them a lot of trips to the free throw line. Bilderback, no foul called there. A little surprised. I thought there would be. Some good passing for a change by Centennial on that possession, Mike. 
And Haw gets called for the foul on Centennial, so a double whammy for the Cougars if you're a Centennial fan. <laughs> Tough to tell in real time when they make those calls. And we don't have the benefit of replay. And so the calls they make are the calls everyone has to live with. Star racing down, finds wow. Ewell, and Ewell takes advantage with her first field goal of the game. Shutta, in and out. It will stay with Centennial. What I've noticed is, as you pointed out, it's been mi primarily miscues. Centennial not necessarily a worse team than De La Salle in terms of quality. It's just the miscues. Yep. And we saw those miscues, how they were magnified yesterday playing Eastview. And it's playing out almost like that today as Beckin draws the blocking foul. Centennial in the bonus. So Beckin goes to the free throw line. Beckin, quiet game, just seven points. Front end's pure. We'll have St. Paul Central and Eastview for you in the bracket B final. That will be an interesting game and a potential preview for a 4A state tournament. Tony Geard watched that game. He said if Central can get themselves collected, they're disciplined, but he said if they can get collected, get all on the same page, look out. He thinks they could easily take on White Bear Lake if that happens. And Adonane will go to the line after she's hacked. New player in there for De La Salle right now, number 15, Natalie Ewell. I hope I pronounced that name right. And number five, Maria Phillips also in for the Islanders. Getting to the point now where Faith's looking at the time, looking at the score and thinking about getting her reserve some minutes as Adonane gets the front end. Ewell only a sophomore for the Islanders. And the back. Twenty six point lead for De La Salle. It looks like they'll start the weekend with a split. Traveling call on Gieski. They've had a lot of those today. Ewell, too strong. Adonane races in for the rebound. Centennial had no idea Adonane was coming. Star can't clean it up. Foul is called. It's on Centennial, Gieski, and that will put Star to the line. De La Salle now in the bonus. Star gets the front end of a one and one. Chris Bradley checks back into the game for Centennial. Well, what we've seen today is the Islander team that I believe most fans are going to see in the Tri Metro and in their non conference matches. They've got yeah. a game against Lakeville North on Thursday. That's going to be another big match. Oh, yeah. So De La Salle stacking their non-conference portion of the schedule with Class 4A teams. Ewell, no layup. Jump ball, possession arrow, points to Centennial.
Johnson going back in, giving Ewell a breather. Ewell four points. Less than eight to go. De La Salle up by 27 in a game they've dominated from the start. Back in. Loses it to Starr. And Starr slow to get up, but she gets up and heads back down court. Turnover on De La Salle as Phillips can't handle a pass. So with De La Salle after this first weekend and after this first week where it's all four opponents, how will they shape up with Benilde St. Margaret's, with Hill Murray, oh, as they look at the 3A field? Oh, no, no doubt about it, Mike. They'll, they'll definitely hold their own with, uh, with those squads. Star with the steal, and she's open, and she'll go to the line. Back in with the foul. And what does Centennial take from this? A lot of miscues this weekend that really have cost them. Well, it, it, it has, and, and like I said earlier, it's something that when they go back to work this next week, I'm sure that Jill Beckham will want to break down everything and look at all the items that they need to work on and get better on. Uh, ball handling, passing, uh, making be just simply making better decisions with the ball, and I'm sure the, the team as a whole will get a good look at those mistakes when they watch them on film. And those mistakes are always magnified, and they stick out in their mind when you have to see them on film. And how will they grow? You know, they've got a tough conference and a deep conference in Northwest Suburban, so most mm -hmm. of those schools play each other. They don't get a lot of non-conference matches. Nordby couldn't get the layup, got her own rebound, and going to the line. Kind of a microcosm of how things have gone for Centennial today. Definitely. So how do they regroup, so to speak? How do they apply what they've learned in the first weekend as they go up against the likes of Osseo and Maple Grove, who are going to be the front runners in the Northwest Suburban yeah. Conference, at least after weekend one. Well, you know, these two first two games, they've obviously have faced some pretty stiff competition, and they can only get better from that. Um, you know, these games will help get them more battle tested mentally for sure. Those free throws from Nordby, her first points of the game. Wow. Builder back, not seeing a lot of action today because of her foul situation as Starr misses. She has yet to score. And just to put an exclamation point on the dominance from De La Salle, Yo. no starter has less than six points for the Islanders. And when you look at Centennial, Builder back has zero. Norby just has two. You know, Dieske has 15. Sorry. <laughs> Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, when when I watch this De La Salle team, as this game has progressed, the thing that stands out in my mind and really strikes me is how not only how quick they are, but how strong they are, too. And they really fight and box out well for those rebounds, Mike. And to finish up that point, the other starters today, Hogg and Bilderback had zero, and Beckin just has nine. They do get a putback, though. I didn't see who scored that. Unfortunately, I didn't get that one either. I think, I think that may have been Bradley. De La Salle killing some clock now. In complete control. Johnson stepped on the line when she tried to pass to Lloyd, and so Centennial gets another possession here. Central and Eastview will do battle for the bracket B final coming up which you can watch on grandstadium.tv. Just click the link on the search archive page. Along with all the other games from the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off. Taishana Johnson will get double digits. She has 11. It's 
Centennial starting to send in the reserves now. Norby heading to the line. Tyber, um, Jenna Gishwind is in the lineup or on the floor for Centennial, number 20. 5'7", senior guard. Star goes out, and Dornsbach will get a few more minutes with 4.53 left. You know, the one nice thing about Centennial, you know, all the, team, the great teams they've had over the last few years, these young players now, they've had an opportunity to watch players like Megan Knight, Britta Shunem, and Hannah Steele, all those great players who got Centennial to the state tournament. And, you know, they watch these guys and they say, you know what, I want to be like them. I want to be like them. And they want to go out and hard to get to that level. And for De La Salle, a dominant performance today. Got that surprise from St. Paul Central yesterday. What's in their minds as they continue their season and get their home opener next week against Lakeville North? Well, you know, a tournament like this, you know, where they lost a tough one yesterday to St. Paul Central and now getting presumably coasting to an easy win here today, it gives them a shot of confidence that they know that hey, last year was no fluke. You know they know that they can compete with the with the big boys, the top teams, and you know having having this kind of a game today just you know obviously it just gives them a huge shot of confidence. Tanny Britz in the lineup for De La Salle nails a pair as we enter stat padding time. What I believe will make this De La Salle team a force to be reckoned with in 3A was just the run they put up last yeah. year. Yeah. Undefeated going into the state tournament. First year with a new coach, a somewhat younger squad. But Lloyd with two more. 18 for her. Younger squad, they brought in a couple of North players who played on the varsity team as eighth graders, so just a lot of youth. Yeah. You know, you, and they didn't look that way. Yeah. You know, you just never know. I, I think this weekend has to be encouraging for them. You know, when you come off, uh, you know, when you get so close and you fall just short, you never know for sure if that's going to be uh, a confidence booster or something that's going to be an impediment for you. You, you just don't know. Describe the ability or what benefits there are to webcasting the entire tournament from start to finish. Well, I think it gives uh, people here in the, not only in the state of Minnesota, but also the entire Midwest uh, a, a chance to view and see the quality of Minnesota high school girls teams that we've had here in this tournament. You get a pretty good, pretty good sampling of what we have to offer. And De La Salle ready to make a line change here after Lloyd makes her free throws. Great day for her. Now we talked about De La Salle and we mentioned this yesterday. A younger team, they still only have two seniors on their team this year. Those seniors being Brits and Dickinson, Britt's a reserve, Dickinson a starter. So the team that we see now for De La Salle, they're going to be around for the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. We might be not be talking about just one state title. We could be talking about a back-to-back -back here, and Faith Johnson-Patterson knows all about that. Oh, Led yeah. Minneapolis North to a three-peat in 3A from 2003 through 2005, and her assistant, Maya Johnson, was on board for two of those. So De La Salle sending in the reserves now. Corey Garner, Dejana Hodges, Dickinson getting a few more minutes. Paige Rodriguez and Joy Jones all in for De La Salle. Centennial also sending in the reserves as we wrap things up here in the third place match. 
Centennial, Jenna Christofferson, number 24, Taylor Locke, number 30. No basket, but the shot was from Jill Conrad, the freshman, 41, and Dijah Williams, number 23, also in. Allison Oyos wraps up the second or third string, if you will. But it's always nice, I mean, in games like this, where Oyos can now get on the newspaper. Yep. To get the reserves, to get the younger players some minutes to get them prepared because you never know when a starter could go down to an injury. You exactly. know, heaven forbid that doesn't happen. Yeah, you, o you always have to be ready for those uh, possibilities. And if you play at St. Paul Johnson, you have to be ready at any time. I've watched the boys basketball team last year when they won the Class 3A title with an undefeated run. If you're on that Johnson team, you're going to play regardless of whether or not yeah. you're starting. Yeah. It's an interesting model, but it ensures there's no favorites, no superstars. Yep. Everyone gets a chance to play, but it also, I think, keeps everyone prepared knowing that you they're going to put you out in pressure situations. You know, I always, uh, maybe perhaps I'm a little biased and a little partial, but I think of that uh, great 1986-87 Iowa team, first uh, <laughs> year for head coach Tom Davis, when he had not only a great starting five, but he had a slew of players coming off the bench and getting a lot of minutes. Dijah Williams, the 5'8 freshman, will now make the paper. And Katie Worth, another freshman, getting some minutes now for the Cougars. Johnson, until I saw them play, I've, I saw teams perhaps doing line changes five for five on occasion, but never... <laughs> a team that would play all 13 of its players in the first half. Yeah. Jill Conrad draws the foul. She'll head to the line. Good for these young players on both squads to get some game experience here. A lot of freshmen in right now and a few sophomores on the floor. Conrad misses her first. Could you imagine playing on a team where if you were on the varsity roster, you were going to play no matter what? Well, that, that would be, uh, you know you'd be getting some minutes at least. <laughs> some TV time perhaps. Yeah. Some exposure. There's no one right philosophy to coaching. There are several ways to do it, but yeah. every coach brings oh, sure. his or her own style. Yep. Less than a minute now. After the next games, Central and Eastview, they will have the all-tournament team for bracket B. Oh. With the layup and a tough shot to Dejana Hodges. That was a beauty. That was. And so she'll make the paper. When uh, they open up the newspapers tomorrow, I think that De La Salle Centennial game is going to have a giant box score. It'll take up quite a bit of space. But De La Salle will start the weekend with a split. Centennial has a little work to do, but if they can focus on cleaning themselves up, fixing those miscues, things should take care of themselves, and I think they'll be able to make a run with Osseo Maple Grove in the Northwest Suburban. And De La Salle ends its weekend going one and one with a 74-46 win. And this is just the beginning of a tough schedule for the Islanders. They've got Lakeville North, they've got Minnetonka, and don't forget the Tri-Metro. They've got Minnehaha Academy to deal with over there. Now they can't say that they won't be battle tested. They've already had a couple games against some top programs already. And they were shocked with St. Paul Central yesterday, so they're definitely going to be battle tested and I guess the start of perhaps a new streak. Whether it's 30 games, we don't know. But uh, I'm sure De La Salle would like to win their next 30 games or so. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And so that wraps it up from here. 74-46 the final. Stay tuned for the championship in bracket B between Central and Eastview. Until then, Mike Peden and Alex Nagel signing off. <laughs>